Because when the running is coming up, it's the bone. A tooth over here. Many problems. Yeah, like this one. Some tooth. Like this. Because before this place we have a small forest and had um, many, many Chinese tombs like that. Mm. The Chinese cemetery. So they want to hide in people. So they yeah. use the cemetery. Uh, yeah, cemetery of the Chinese tomb. Mm. So some people when they get bad smell, they sing that from the Chinese tomb, that before mm. Popo region. I think he's a clever man. Because for Popo himself, he's a professor. He used to study in France, mm. in Paris. Yes, that's where yeah, he really has person. many ideas. But I think crazy man also. Yeah. Mm, the break of the jawbone. This, this jawbone. Do you know more than 100 victims? Do you know this one more than 100? For the baby or the children, the Camaros killed by beat the head against the tree. Do you know they hold the feet of the baby and beat the head against the tree. Do you know it's very cruel. Yeah, they use the tree to kill the baby or the children. Yeah. Yeah, it's terrible that you will see the photo in prison. You know, some baby, the Camaros threw on the air and pushed them by bayonet. You know, pushed by bayonet. They think that all the children there the here, son. the son of professor, larger a doctor. So when they grow up, maybe the smart children. So poor body want to kill whole family, all of them. She's terrible. Yeah, it's very terrible. Yeah. It makes me wonder how, how these soldiers can be able to do such uh, cruelty? Yeah, you, you know, because at the time, most of them, they have no choice. Mm. But a lot of soldiers of Khmer Rouge, Pol Pot had to train or to brainwash the children for the soldiers. So you know, to brainwash them. From the children and yeah, they from make the them soldiers. Yeah, to make them the soldiers. And then most of them, they never go to school. Mm. They cannot read or they cannot write letter. So, they so easy, to... yeah, easy for the Khmer Rouge to control or mm. to brainwash. Mm. So all of them, they very cruel. You know, they don't know anything. Mm. It's nearly 9,000 scars, to nearly 9,000. And the stupa had 17 floor. You know, 1 to 10 for keep a scar, and the rest won't be keep on the top, like jawbone and both the leg bone also. Yes, it's nearly 9,000 scars. The scar of baby or the scar of the children, because the camera took whole family, all intellectual people. The scar of baby or the scar of the children, because the Khmer took whole family, all intellectual people. The skull of baby or the skull of the children, because the Khmer took whole family, all intellectual people.
the map of Phnom Penh. You know, over here in city, you know, in Phnom Penh. Yeah. So it's, we it's have two slang, you know, San Museum, or we can say at 21, mm -hmm. before the Khmerus get them in prison. But when the torturers took the photo and write for document already, the Khmerus took whole family to kill here. Now we are here at uh, Chung Ek Killing Field. It's about 15 kilometers from Phnom Penh. Yes, before they keep them in prison, you know, in Phnom Penh. Mm. So now they have a lot of photo and a lot of document. Det här är en gammal skoga som har fått ju dem till fängelse. Säkerhetsfängelset Tullsläng, även kallat S21, var från början en högstadieskola som under Pol Pot-regimen under 1975-1979 byggdes om till ett fängelse dit obekväma politiska fångar och intellektuella skickades efter att ha arresterats på order från Ankar-regeringen i det demokratiska Kampuchea. I fängelset satt fångarna i genomsnitt två till fyra månader. Efter denna tid av tortyr och svält avrättades fångarna. Uppskattningsvis 17 000 fångar, även kvinnor och små barn, skickades till S21, varav endast 10 överlevde. I fängelset upprättade regimen en mängd bizarra regler för fångarna. Bröt man mot någon av dessa regler bestraffades man med elektriska chocker. Tullsläng var en plats som var ytterst topphemlig, ledd av Kang Kek Yu, kallad Dutch. Byggarbetare som arbetade utanför fängelset berättade om det som en plats dit människor gick in men aldrig kom ut. Det regnar inom pen. Vår båt har tak. Trätoppar sticker upp i den översvämmande med kongfloden. Så här lever människor under samma himmel men med olika badtofflor. Har de alltid bott så här? Kunde man fly hit? Fanns det någonstans att fly? Vi gömmer oss nu. Mm.